Demon keeps dreaming of a demon town. Motherfucker, bitch, fuck, shit went down. Fleming's got an itch, scratch it with a bitch. Demon keeps dreaming of a demon town. Ooh, Johnson, that's my name. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Shadows of the Damned Satanic Hell difficulty video walkthrough. This is the level 5-4 entitled The Final Chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the last boss of the game, this is Fleming. This is the king of demons, the demon of all demons, the, good, the goon we've been chasing throughout the entire level. Throughout the entire the game, in fact. And this is the fight. And this is hard. If you have a full life bar, this will probably be less hard. But all you need to know right now is if I get hit by this guy, it pretty much means game over. Unless I get really lucky and I get only hit by a fraction of the attack. And uh, my strategy for him is to just keep charging up the Skull Cushioner, hit him with the quad shots. As soon as he gets stunned like this, you want to hit him with the hot bonus secondary function on, on any other weapon you can. And you have to do this rinse and repeat three times. Bear in mind, this, this boss is kind of funny. Sometimes when you stun Fleming and he goes down into that posture, you will hit him with an army's worth of damage and he'll still not go down, he'll still not go into this mode so that you can finish off his body part. I don't know why this happens, it just seems to be completely random and sometimes the game does not want you to win. And the time you will really notice this is on the third and final time that you have to stun him enough to destroy his final body part. And uh, this fight probably took me about an hour, an hour and a half to record. I couldn't do it, it took forever, it was pissing me off. And uh, as soon as you hit the, the second phase, which is now, he'll start doing that move where he opens his cape and the disco ball attacks you with the electricity. That move right there is a nuisance because you'll notice that I dodged it perfectly, but sometimes it will still hit you. When he spins his staff around and you see the red energy, that means that he's going to do the ground shock wave. When you see his head glow, it means he's going to do the eye move. And if he opens his cape, do not shoot the Paula. Only shoot him. If you shoot Paula, you will fail because she will die. And uh, if he brings up that big green thing around him, it means you have to drop the, the ball, the, the, the fully charged skull into the room with him. That will always put him into the stunned moment. And uh, if he does that, it means he's turning it to darkness and you have to hit the swinging goat lamp to turn it back to, to day. Just bear in mind, he will still attack you while it, you're shooting at that thing, so don't think you're safe. And just be very careful. But just keep plowing away with him. Uh, that move right there, if you do not see the light, but you see his head moving, he will still attack you with his eyes. It just means that the game is broken and glitchy, and it did not show you the visual cue. Be aware of that, it's caught me out numerous times. But this fight is more a test of patience than anything else. If you're on an earlier difficulty, you'll not have that much of a problem, because it's... You know, it's not that challenging as a fight. The only reason it's hard is because he does a lot of damage and I don't have a lot of life. And there is no checkpoints in it. So this can potentially be a 15 minute fight if you're unlucky. I get lucky though and I end it in about 7 minutes. Which is the quickest that I managed to do in my entire run. And uh, it went quite well. But we're now into the third and final phase. The most awkward phase. And what happens here is he's going to start sending a hand out to grab you. Which will teleport you into another dimension. And the hit detection on this fucking hand, guys, is just ridiculous. You will dodge it almost every time, and it still grabs you. It's not the end of the world when it does, you just need to know what you're doing or you'll be in a, a spot of bother. But just keep rinsing and repeating, and he will die. But I was not about a lonely place to die, so... From the last video, we found out that somebody would cut the rope that these people were climbing with and it cuts to these two hunter guys on this on this mountain top with rifles and scopes and they're looking down at these people and they're making out like you know oh I could take this shot from here I could get this person look at that it didn't even fucking hit me so right now when you're in the dark world you need to destroy these doors and find the exit the exit is behind one of them randomly it will be a white doorway there you go that's the way back to the fight and um, anyhow back to the story so there's these two hunters looking down and you're thinking, Jesus Christ, are these crazy Scotsmen literally in these mountains hunting random folk that might turn up? That seems a bit improbable. And then these two other guys turn up and start talking to them and ask them for the, the hunting license. And it does this whole role reversal where the two people you thought were bad guys are actually just innocent folk. And the two guys that turn up end up stabbing them in the throat and shooting them and doing all sorts of bad stuff. And there's these two dudes that then take the rifles from those guys and start shooting at those people that were mountaineering. 
and it turns out that the little girl that they've stumbled across on, upon is uh, a girl that has been kidnapped from a very, very notorious criminal, like, mafia Russian family. And they want a ransom, so they're holding her in the highlands until they get this ransom arranged. And it's two psychos that do this for a living. And these people just kind of got in the middle of it. And uh, I'm doing a big disservice to this film by saying how simple this, this, this narrative is. Because it's really interesting, and I did enjoy it a, a whole lot more than I thought I was going to. There is a really fucking sick death scene for one guy who gets pushed out a window of this, like... Just a normal house, he falls out the second story window of the house, as he's flying backwards, he lands back first on a concrete fence, on like a brick fence. It's like a full-on wall, and you just hear the most sickening crunch as his back breaks, and oh, it, it was pretty rough, pretty sore that moment, but I liked it, it was cool. And uh, I recommend it as well, it's an interesting take on, uh, on a horror film, because I thought it was going to be completely different. And uh, yeah, it gets my thumbs up, I did enjoy it. But... This is the last part of the fight. As soon as you get him to the third phase and into the third section of this, if you've not noticed what I'm doing, I'm using the, the teether to lock onto him and then I'm spamming him with bullets. It is much easier than trying to hit him with anything else and he'll go down super fast. As soon as you hit him enough, he will go down. And then he does this really strange thing where he starts kind of imploding. And I'm not really sure what you're supposed to do here on... on I don't know if there's a strategy to this bit or if you've got to do anything specific, but I just kind of roll around because I have flinched from debris and I think it hurt me, so I don't know if you can actually be killed here. It does seem to time out after a couple of seconds. I've tried shooting it with my light shot. I've tried going up to it and it all seems to happen the same. It just seems to end. So there you go. But that is the final boss of the game. But as per usual, it's not quite over just then. You're going to see a lovely fake credits reel, and then we will go to the true final boss of the next level. So thanks for watching, people, and you take care now.